Not because of my position as a parliamentary, okay, but a member a, of the parliament, general secretary, citizen of Ghana right. first, former member of parliament who mm. should be interested in what goes on in parliament, and then a general secretary. Not many people know that you are a former member of parliament. I've been a member because maybe somehow my constituency name has been changed. In fact, the constituency has been split into two, mm. and uh, none of the two carries the original name. So many people have forgotten about Wenchi mm. West. Mm. I was the member of parliament for Wenchi West for 12 years. Mm. Okay. You were in parliament the day Ilevi became a, a problem? Yes, I was in the public gallery. What is your own thought about Ilevi? Well, I, I think I was about the first person to speak against E. Levy after the reading of the budget, if you mm. check the records. Mm. Mm. It was the first That's to right. address That's right. <laughs> the press. But I'm asking, have you changed your mind? I haven't changed my mind. 1.75 <laughs> to 1.5. I, I haven't changed my mind at all. In fact, the day the budget was being read, I was mm. sitting there with one official from Minister of Finance mm. and the wife of the Minister of Finance who were sitting right. at the and were holding a discussions on the side and I did when they mentioned the abolition of the road tool mm -hmm. the guy turned out and said oh we have finished you guys Jinnah are you not worried we have finished you I said why I said abolition of uh, road tools I said that is a very retrogressive move of any government and maybe they are using it to play some pranks. Mm. So wait and hear the full budget. And lo and behold, <laughs> they then <laughs> mentioned this e levy matter. Mm. Mm. So I got out and I addressed the press conference that I seen all the things I, 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 I felt about the e levy. And mm. uh, as time passes on, I get more convinced that mm. e levy should not pass. Are you not making the job of the government difficult? With your what is the job to the e levy? You, if the job of the government is corruption and lack of accountability, then I have a duty to make the job of the government difficult. But if you think the, that the government is corrupt? Am I the one telling you? Are you hearing it I'm from the first you. time? You are a media person. Go and look at the records. How have we performed on the corruption perception in this mm. when uh, this government came to power? Apart from that, the litany of scandals. Mm. I hope you've been following them. Mm. Uh -huh. So it is not, as who said, if I'm saying it, I'm just repeating the obvious that this is, according to the records, this is the most corrupt government mm. ever in the Fourth Republic. Okay. And this is the government that feels that they can, they can use impunity to avoid accountability. So if you have a human rights lawyer presiding over a country mm -hmm. and operatives of his government claim that because they are in power, they can do whatever they want. And when they are called to account for government expenditure and then ministers are bold to tell Ghanaians in their face that they would not account for some aspects of state expenditure. Mm. Then we are not operating a proper democracy. In fact, our democracy is limping. I see. Have you heard the thoughts of people say that the NDC is not ready to lead Ghana again and that you must wait for breaking the eight to come and go before you come back? Have you heard that? You see, some of these things are coming from disappointed voters on the side of MPP. In fact, it started like that, but now it is no longer. That, that, that uh, expression is mm. dying down. Mm. Okay. Because uh, why, why is a process down? of mm. changing your mind, it's a process particularly about the party you want to vote for. Mm. When your party begins, like misbehaving in government, <laughs> You are not bold to point it out first. First, oh, let's give them more time. Let's give them more time. When, then you come to a point where, as for this, is bad. But okay, when you are asked, whom did you vote for? I didn't vote. 
<laughs> that's, that's what they say. I didn't vote. Then they moved to a point where, oh, I'm not going to vote again because NDC and MPP are the same. Mm -hmm. These are all rhetorics of people, disappointed voters for MPP. So it gets to a point where if they are able to get over that, then they begin saying that, well, we don't like NDC, but as we sit here, it is the only means of removing this bad government. So right. this government is not representative of typical MPP government. Right. So even though I'm MPP, I'm prepared to support NDC to remove uh, this particular mm -hmm. aberration. Okay. So that is the process that is happening now. You see that many, many of the people who are calling for the removal of this government are not even coming from NDC. They're coming MPP from people MPP people. Who are dis disappointed. Disappointed. Mm -hmm. Because you see, in uh, political practice, mm -hmm. you get to a point where um, um, you apply a theory that says that uh, losing an election may be better than losing a democracy. Okay. Losing an election may be better than losing a democracy. If the political gatekeeping of, you know, selection of leadership mm. fails at a point, a wrong person can sneak through and lead your party and then be implementing policies that run counter to uh, your, your, your party's core beliefs and that threaten to undermine the democracy of the state, of the country you live in. Yeah. When you get to that point, mm -hmm. then the establishment within that party may feel like the best way to save the democracy is to abandon their candidate who is in government and support the opponents to remove him. It will involve that party losing an election because it is their candidate who is in power. But they believe that losing that election will be better than losing a democracy because if they allowed that person to persist, to continue, mm. the whole democratic experiment may collapse. And that is where we are now as a country. We are that that is why That is why you hear prominent MPP people, mm. people you least expect will speak against this government. They are now speaking up. Because they think that MPP losing power or Nana Kufado's government losing power will help to even uh, uh, protect the long-term interests of MPP itself mm -hmm. and our democracy. So you say Nanado is a wrong choice? Well, your guess is as good as mine. I don't have, I don't have any guess. You don't have any guess? You are the general secretary. Then you want to follow my guess. My answer is yes. That Nanado is a wrong guess. Yes, and Kufuor Kufu had the premonition mm. when he spoke in so many ways that we should be careful not to put somebody there who is full of tension, who is this, who is that, who is that. Everything that President Kufu said on that occasion has come to pass. And it's a, 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 a perfect representation of what President Kufu said. Mm. It's Nana Kufu Ado and his governance. My guest in the studio is uh, General Asedo Nketia, the General Secretary of the NDC. He's also uh, here with me in the studio. We're live on 3FM 92.7 and on TV3. I see your comments on social media already. Uh, General, you are trending on social media. <laughs> are, are you on social media? Yes, I, 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 but I don't have too much time concentrating on social media. Uh, you know, I just... But you are trending this morning. Yes. How does it feel? Well, it feels good if it is. I'm trending for the good reasons. Yeah. Uh -huh. It mm. feels good. But, uh, Do you trust in the security of this country? Um, that is too wide a question 
to Given elicit what is yes happening in the no. sub region, Mali, Guinea, Burkina Faso. Well, okay, where we are now. Right. Do you trust <laughs> in our securities? I think that we are in 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 a, in a very precarious situation. Why? Because political contentment is always the greatest enemy of any agit political agitator. And the reverse is also true. Mm. The best friend of any political agitator mm -hmm. is political discontent. Right. And if you see the type of discontent that is playing out in Ghana, economic discontent, social discontent, political discontent. It's a dangerous recipe. So we should all be concerned. Mm. And the fact that government is not prepared to learn, the fact that government has consciously recruited uh, vigilantes and embedded them in the security services. It's a very dangerous thing. And the fact that people are complaining about recruitments based on ethnicity and the others. Mm. When you take the history of other countries, Rwanda, Rwanda, even Togo, Togo, that's right. Here, there are crises and everything. Anywhere you begin introducing ethnicity in the security services. Mm -hmm. You are up for trouble. And <laughs> my uncle Buzia learned this through the hard way. You know, a champion who overthrew Buzia. Mm. He was promoted and put in charge of the presidential security on the basis that they needed an Akan mm. to head that security. The very day, history tells us that the very day a champion was promoted and put in that sensitive situation, that was the very day he started planning to overthrow Buzia. And the coup that overthrew Buzia, mm. many of the key actors were Boros and Ashantis, his own tribesmen. Mm. So it doesn't help anybody to try to introduce ethnicity in the security because if you if you divide the security along ethnic lines or political lines mm. and so on you are headed for trouble right someone told me when i advertised your program that you were going to be here that the speaker of parliament is now wearing local uh and regal stuff but he's going for health care in dubai now i should ask you what do you think about it as a member of the parliamentary service board what is the contradiction here? He I said don't we should, the speaker says we should practice made in Ghana, but he's going for healthcare elsewhere. I thought the one who has been preaching by made in Ghana has been the president himself. Right. And where does he go for medical care? And the speaker is not responsible for building hospitals. It is the president who is responsible for building hospitals and providing medical care. Mm. So if he is going outside for medical treatment, why should anybody question the speaker when he goes out for medical treatment? Do you think the government promised too much? Akufado's government, Agenda 111, all those things. Do you think they promised too much? In fact, they failed too much. <laughs> <laughs> the, the problem is not about the promise. Mm. <laughs> the problem is about the failure rate. Mm. The failure rate is too much for you. It's too much. And it sends, it creates the impression of people who consciously planned to come and deceive the people and get away with it. So, when you, you remember I mentioned this uh, monkey business? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I read in some book about, I didn't understand monkey business until I read about it in some book. Mm. 
And uh, the meaning of monkey business they, they was, there was a story that was used to illustrate the monkey business, that so a merchant approached a village where monkeys, there was a monkey sanctuary mm -hmm. there by like mm -hmm. Tafia Tome or right. Wabin yeah. Fima and, right. and all that. Then he offered to buy one monkey for 100 pounds sterling. Wow. And the people, ah, this man couldn't be true. Why would he be wasting money like that? Mm. Let's try. So they caught a few monkeys, presented to him, and he paid 100 pounds for each of the monkeys. Then they said, oh, then it is true. Mm -hmm. Some days after, people started trooping and selling. Uh, you go to the bush, catch a monkey, come and sell. Mm -hmm. Then, some few days afterwards, he increased the price. And now he'll be buying monkeys for 200 pounds. Then the rush continued. Right. People were coming in. People were coming in and the monkey population was depleting. Then... He got to a point and he was now offering 500 pounds sterling for one, one monkey. monkey. Meanwhile, the monkey population has depleted so badly. So people rushed and went and caught all the remaining monkeys, came and, and sold, sold for 500, 500 pounds each. And the merchant paid. He had built a big cage mm. and had two agents taking care of the cage. Then... Uh, when there appears to be no other monkey remaining, he now offered that uh, he will buy, if you could get a monkey, he will pay 1,000 mm. pounds. pounds sterling for one monkey. Then the villagers combed the bush, they couldn't get the monkey. They were so worried. Why didn't, uh, couldn't we have waited to get this right. price? Right. Then the merchant told them that he was taking a leave for one week mm. and then he will come back. But when he comes back, he will buy a monkey for one monkey for 1,000 $1, pounds sterling. So he went. He started combing, combing, combing. Then one of his uh, 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 agents, mm. two agents, went to town and whispered to people that, oh, if you can come, we'll be able to sneak some of the monkeys we have bought mm -hmm. behind our boss's back and then sell them to you at 700 pounds. So that when he comes and you sell for 1,000 pounds, you still make cool 300 pounds. The following day, all the villagers came and queued up and bought all the, those who didn't have money went to borrow you know that mm. those who had money were buying four or five monkeys, ten monkeys. They came and bought all the monkeys and mm. paid 700 pounds, 700 pounds each. The following day, the two agents also vanished. They waited. The merchant himself never came. His two agents also vanished. So the villagers were stuck with their own monkeys. Mm. <laughs> but their monies have been taken Ashe. away. In this situation, you know who I will put no. in the shoes of the merchant? No. Nanado. Nanado is the monkey business owner. Yes. And, and he vanished. The two others. Mm. He said that oh, he has mm. taken leave, so he will come back. The two... The two merchants, uh, uh, the uh, assistants, uh, acolytes. Yes, mm. yes, yes. They are who? Finance Minister and Dr. Baumia. So, Nanado so, is the monkey business owner who yes. vanished. And, and, and his, his agents, two his agents and Dr. Are Dr. Dr. Baumia and Finance Minister. And Finance Minister. But why, why so, those ones? Ah, because they are the ones who play the tricks. Oh, come and buy so that when our boss comes, you can resell and make money. So they came and bought the monkeys so they didn't have to carry the monkeys away. They bought them, took all the money, so when they left, there was no pursuit of anybody in the village again. That is where we are now. Mm. We are at a point where the merchant has taken leave and his agents are urging us <laughs> to buy monkeys behind the scenes so we can resell the, the to the monkey when he comes back you. in town.
the president will not be happy with you. He's entitled to his opinion. I have never wished he would be happy with me. Are you able to afford fuel these days? Well, yes. I buy fuel. Have you seen the price? The price, up? the price. I have no option. What runs through your mind when you get to the filling station? And you see the price flicking. And well, I that. squeeze other things to be able to buy fuel because my job has to be done. Mm. And part of my job is to make sure we see the back of this mm. government. So I cannot just throw my hands in the air and mm. say that because fuel is expensive, I will not do my work. So I will continue buying and make sure that we persist till we mm. remove the government. What, what do you say to those who say the NDC is not ready to govern? Well, they may be in a democracy. Everybody is entitled to his opinion, but I, I, I'm afraid that is not the dominant opinion. Are you ready to govern? We are very, very ready to govern. What now. makes you Except ready? Except that mm. the challenges that we are having, we are already having to go to the drawing board and prepare ourselves because 2025 is not going to be easy. Mm. Why do you say that? Because we are going to be handed uh, over to, uh, I mean, the. the if an economy that is a shell, if we are even able to keep our highest above water till 2024, mm -hmm. 2025 will be a, a difficult year. So we shouldn't make any uh, fuss about it. Don't let mm -hmm. us de delude ourselves. Mm -hmm. Whoever comes to power in 2025 will inherit a very difficult economy. Mm -hmm. And so and we are prepared for that because there must be a break. We must stop the decay first. Okay. Before you can build. I see. Okay. And we have done it before in the revolution. Mm. We we're doing, uh, the country was doing, running negative GDP numbers, annual negative GDP numbers until the revolution came, 1983. Mm. By 1984, we have, uh, you know, migrated into positive GDP numbers, and we have remained there since that time to now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have taken over a hopelessly devastated economy before, and we're able to uh, fix it. So we are expecting to take over another hopelessly devastated mm -hmm. economy, mm -hmm. but we will fix it, and we will make sure that the way to fix it and to end the people's trust is to be open and frank to the people. Don't deceive them that things are good mm. when they are feeling that things are not good. Do then you are preaching do, everywhere do, do that you trust the Electoral Commission? As it is composed now, no. Why? You have a problem with some of the composition of the Electoral Commission? I have said so several times. And Jim I Mesa, still meant, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the country uh, will do better with another set, but we are stuck with them. So we will still win the elections with them in the in the seat. Are you because sure when the mm. when the people decide, mm -hmm. and the decision is so overwhelming, it becomes difficult for anybody to fidget around. I lived through the union government. I was, in fact, a party agent, a, a polling agent, mm. not a party because mm. there were no political party. Mm. I was a polling agent representing the no camp, okay. which Nanado was championing at that time. So it was because I was following PMFJ with Nanado that I volunteered to be a polling agent. Right. After the election, <laughs> I had to carry the ballot box for five miles. To the to the coalition on your head, yes, five miles, five miles to the coalition center. So I've gone to all those, <laughs> and that is why if I express my disappointment about how one of our leaders who has gotten the opportunity to govern this country mm. has, uh, you know, mess as up like that, I, I I feel very hurt. There's a report that says that political party funding yeah. uh, engenders corruption mm. i'm sure you've seen it yes i've seen it what are your and thoughts I, i've contributed to it in fact do you agree first of all with the, with the that it engenders corruption yes and what do you do as general secretary you see 
not many people know that I did my research at master's level mm. on corruption. Okay. You know what? That was your specialty. Yes. Mm. So my whole research was on corruption. And because of that, with special focus on the role parliament can play and anti-corruption infrastructure in the Fourth Republic, mm -hmm. special emphasis on parliament and so on. So I did a lot of research on corruption. And one of the inescapable conclusions that emerged from that research was that one of the main causes of corruption is uh, political campaign funding. Mm -hmm. And that is why corruption, because political campaign funding is the cause of winner takes all. That's right. Okay. <laughs> winner takes all will mean dodging or breaching procurement processes mm -hmm. and, and all that. And see, the government is the biggest consumer in Ghana. So, where government procurement becomes problematic, mm. all other causes of corruption fail, uh, fade into insignificance. And so, if this nation must move forward, we must find out how we can deal with uh, campaign funding that contributes to winner takes all right, and so on. Right. People complain about the constitution, mm. that the constitution has provided for winner takes all. Do you support a, a, a re I don't think that to prevent winner takes all. So will you but the constitution itself. The composition of the constitution. The problem is not about the constitution per se, even though I agree that there are a lot of things right. that could be improved in the constitution. Mm. But I believe, as some philosophers have said, that uh, democracy mm. or uh, democratic people are the ones who build democracy. Mm. People who believe, who have a sense of fairness Mm -hmm. who have a sense of justice, mm -hmm. who have a sense of accountability, responsibility, and all that. Those are the people who can build a democracy. Okay. It is not democratic structures that produce human beings who suddenly will be having a sense of justice, sense of fairness, and all that. You understand? So the democratic structures are there. Right. They are a precondition. Right. But the more important ingredients that create democracy is the attitude of the people who are handling the democratic So the people structures. must support the constitution. Yes. So the leaders, mm. the Bible says you have, uh, it is not everything that you, 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 you have uh, freedom to do. That's right. That's useful. Mm. So if anything at all, the constitution allows a sitting president a lot of powers, mm. but in the use of those powers, Two you can abuse six mm -hmm. you discretionary can, you powers. You can abuse mm. those powers to build a dictatorship. Mm. Much the same way, you can exploit those powers to build a good democracy. I see. So that is the problem with the constitution. With the constitution. That is why I don't believe that the constitution should be thrown away, hook, mm. line, and sinker. Mm but we can reform it. I see. But when we are reforming it, we, we must, must be conscious questions. of the fact that um, if, you, if you restrictions on the use of power is a, a double-edged sword. If the constitution is built such that every mm. act of a president is regulated in a certain manner, mm you end up tying the hands of somebody who may be a good president. Mm. Your impa his impact will not be felt. But, you but it will help us to check. It are, you help not, are you not calling for dictatorship? No, no, no. no. By, I'm by, saying, by what you're saying. Look, the American constitution mm -hmm. is about one-tenth of our constitution. Right. 
you see. In fact, the British don't have any. Yes, the, the principles are sufficient. The people who operate the American democracy and the British democracy, they believe in conventions and norms. Mm. Democratic norms constitute the Greece of every democracy. So you may have the structures, you may have the laws, and so on. Mm. Do you know that Ghana has one of the largest, uh, highest number of legislation against uh, corruption and, and all that, and the largest number of institutions mm. that should mm. fight corruption? Mm. Why is it that? Corruption is still persisting in the country. It tells you that democracy is not in the books or in the constitution. Right. It's the human beings who operate those things. Mm. So if the human beings devote their time, after the, you have made the law against stealing, if the people who operate the constitution, they devote their time to look at the loopholes of the law, to continue with the stealing mm. in spite of the law, Stealing will not stop. Can I pick your thoughts on mm -hmm. manifestos and the National Development Planning Commission, their 40-year development plan? You started it. Yes. You can an email with Thompson. That will remain a very big opportunity. Why? Because, you see, the, we all have been saying it, academics, everybody, politicians mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. on, say that what the nation needs to move forward it's a development plan. But you created a plan, 40-year development. Yes. What happened to That's it? not the first one we created. Right. We created Vision 2020. That's right. Those and days, we thought that 2020 was so far away. Growth and Poverty Reduction Strategy mm -hmm. 1 and 2. And so COVID. we did Vision 2020. When Vision 2020 was being mm -hmm. done, we did the consultation as widely as possible. Mm -hmm. And we thought that it will form the basis of driving our economic development. Mm. When President Kufu came, for some reason, they decided that Vision 2020 is somebody's document. We are not going to work on, with it. So they called Professor Jambafo. That time I was in Parliament. Mm. And taxed him. That's our Minister for Planning. And taxed him, for planning. Mm. Tax him to develop another document. I was on the Finance Committee. In Parliament. And each time we met, he will be saying in private that ah, these things, this document, I don't see anything wrong with the fish in 2020. But for political reasons, we have been asked to make another document. He was saying it privately. So they themselves knew that Vision 2020 was a good document, but for political reasons, because it is bearing the stamp of a previous government, they are not going to use it. They must bring out another one. That's how come they brought this poverty reduction, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. So we missed that first opportunity. I see. Now this 40-year development plan, <coughs> luckily for the country, mm. we started it, but we never concluded it before we left power. So if there has been a transition and another government has come, they could as well input everything they wanted to input into it before its conclusion, so that we cannot say that we are not part of it. So mm. when we come back to mm. power, we, mm. we cannot mm. abolish it. And because it was concluded during uh, President Akufuado's time, right. MPP will also endorse it. That would have been the best opportunity. A blueprint for A us. blueprint for our development. But we missed that opportunity also. What's your promise? Because if you come back to power, would you, uh, would you go back to it? These people brought it. Mm. When you were president, mm. you congratulated them for a good work done, mm. Mm. and yet you felt that. What, it what's your be promise, General? Would you go back to it when you come back to power? It is not about one party bringing it when you come back to power, because development plans mm. cannot be implemented within the eight years mm. a lifetime that any government will spend. Mm. That is why we must look for opportunities to get something that will have a buy-in of the major political actors so that we accept this as our development plan mm -hmm. so the incidence of uh, abandonment of uh, you know projects of previous government mm -hmm. leading to accumulation of debts 
and so on mm. that has brought us where we are now we can limit it otherwise this this all i have said elsewhere mm. that we are where we are now <coughs> on the brink mm. of economic disaster by choice it is not god that imposed this thing on us it's by choice we did it it's ourselves. our collective yes our choice that has brought us where we are but we have leaders because that is why i'm saying by our choice because the choice is made by our leaders when this government took over and in fact before this government took over we had gone into economic difficulties right when president kufo was leaving in fact president kufo was lucky because of this debt forgiveness and right. all that so he had a lot of money of that. so that money could have been used in a better way nevertheless uh, uh, he handed over mm. an economy that was uh, relatively stable but he imposed something on us that haunted us which is in the last quarter of his administration he had now single spine right so immediately we took over all the workers of the country said if Kufu had been in power, this single spine would have been implemented. If MPP had won the election, so we must go implement single spine otherwise. So the first four years was a very turbulent moment, uh, for, moment for us. Mm -hmm. All workers, you remember at a point, doctors were on strike mm -hmm. and Professor mm -hmm. Mills had mm -hmm. to mount a tent at 37 military mm -hmm. hospital mm -hmm. here. And so we went through all those difficulties and said that, okay, Let's go and try and implement this single spy. Even the World Bank and the IMF warned us that it may not be a good thing. But we didn't have any option because of that pressure that was wanted. Right. So we went and did it. The results of the implementation of single spy was that at the end of the implementation, we ended up having close to 70% of the nation's revenue going into wages and salaries mm. so we felt this was not sustainable so we must do something about it we tried so many things mm. and ended up calling a national economic forum at senche right open the books for everybody to look the at the boycotted that yes then some people some MPP members actually attended. Pam, 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 Pam was there. He, said, he, he said was their economic guru. Right. He attended. Osafu Mafu mm. indicated his uh, uh, willingness to mm. attend. Mm. On his way, he was called back he and warned that he shouldn't go. So, no, so we did this. Mm. And then eventually we went uh, to IMF and then it helped us manage should we go back to the so we went in the 2016 the election. elections under an imf program should Ghana go back which to the restricted IMF. if i could and just two minutes. Our, our time is up just two no, minutes so me. we ended mm. we, we 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 went through that austerity in the elections and the projections were that 2017 whatever the economic mm. growth mm. rate will mm. pick back mm. the uh, salary to uh, whatever in, uh, had gone down as a percentage of revenues right. had gone down right. and it continued going right. down then you took over and then began borrowing began appointing so many ministers so many other appointees each of whom will all come with salary oh. and other emoluments and so on so we kept warning that this increase in recurrent expenditure it is going to lead us to a situation where the monies that we will be borrowing mm. will not be will come to a point where we will not be able to pay even the the interest on loans today mm. we are here and interest on loans alone takes about half mm. of the revenue so we go to borrow the, the government doesn't want to go back to the imf should they you see they are they are presenting this imf thing as if it is it is something that and that's, we ought and to that's be, my final question we to ought to be scared of mm. imf is an organization a bank in fact which we joined mm. as a sovereign country 
on our own free will. And we said that when we are in trouble, you go when we need their way, their services, mm -hmm. we go for it. Mm -hmm. And IMF has a lot of products. Okay, if your economy is doing extremely well mm -hmm. and you need IMF support, you go for it to still move your. your I, I your know you have a lot further. to say, but should there we go back others, to the IMF? I, I, I will come to that. So, we, so, we so, 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 so you see, for, for you. if you mess up, mm -hmm. then when you go to IMF, they will impose conditions on you to make sure that. You implement the right policies. Mm. Those right policies are what this government is afraid of because it will help to curb this uh, ostentatious spending mm. and other things. Mm. So it will tie the hands of government so they cannot do this. So bottom line, they should we go back to, to the IMF? I think it is something that they have to consider. So, are you because running, if I, that is the only way mm. we can get out of this mess, mm. then the earlier we went there, the better. Are you, are we, you running again for, for office? In your party, we are not there yet. We have not open nominations. We are. are you are there for general secretary chairman. I'm saying we are not there yet. Do you want to be president? We are not there yet. Who yeah. has open nominations I'm for asking presidential? You want, do you want to be president? I am saying that we are not there yet. If you are in, in uh, if you are a politician, mm. you always aspire to be to occupy the highest office of the land. I see. So, as a politician, if you ask me whether I want to be a president, I'll say yes. I see. What's your favorite song? Mm? What's your favorite song? Was it Chase those crazy ball heads out of town. Chase the, okay, Danny, look for that for me. Chase those crazy ball heads. That's your camera. I'll give you one, <laughs> one minute. Look into the camera and tell me. Danny, look for a Bob Marley. Chase those crazy ball Who's the ball head, by ball the way? Ball heads out of town. Who's the ball head, by the way? Well, don't you know the definition of ball heads? <laughs> That's your camera, Some, your closing thoughts. Somebody who has no hair. <laughs> That's, well, it. That's your camera. Closing thoughts. Yes. Um, 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 I think that the country is in difficulty now, mm. but nobody will do it for us. We need to come together mm -hmm. and recognize first that we are in trouble. Because if you don't recognize that you are in trouble, mm. nobody will help you. Then you are not deserving of anybody's assistance. So let us recognize that the nation Ghana, where we are standing now, economically, socially, uh, security-wise, we are not on safe grounds at all. There's a lot of things that we need to do to recalibrate this, our society. Right. And it will take me and you to mm. do it. That's why I always watch Johnny's Bite. <laughs> the general was yes, his very, every day. Thank I you very much. And I was devoid of insults, mm. but straight to the point, mm. factual and fearless. Thank you very much. General Asidun Getia is, has been my guest. We have been live on 3FM 92.7. And Ya Ofosulabi is ready with all the action uh, on sports yesterday. Obia uh, Hunimasta. Yesterday, Obia Hunimasta. So, uh, <laughs> good morning to the Black Stars of Ghana. We'll see you after the break.